Hello, welcome back to Wednesdays with Finn. Y'all, we have made it. We are finally at the end of the Kings of Israel. Did this take much longer than I expected it to? Yeah. Will I give up? No. Now, we also have the entire dynasty of Judah to get through, but one bite at a time, my friends. Also, for comedy purposes, please be aware that this entire time that song from Tiger King is playing in my head, like, beautiful, wild, and free. So, Ahab. I know we left off on Ahab, but here's the thing. We just, we need to talk about him real quick. I just, I promise this is relevant. I told you that Ahab set up both the temple of Baal in Samaria and the altar of Baal in Samaria, as well as the Asherah poles. Well, he also uh, kind of messed up in battle too. So there's that. So now you have a king who's basically failed on every conceivable front. He um, did not take care of the spiritual health of the people. Didn't really take care of the financial health of the people. Also did not ca take care of the military health of the borders. So good job, Ahab. You're zero for everything. His wife Jezebel was later thrown out of window where her corpse was then trampled by horses. Oh, beautiful, wild, and free. This brings us to our next king, Ahaziah. Ahaziah was the son of Ahab. Do you remember that pattern from earlier where if you're a terrible, terrible leader, then your, your successor usually doesn't reign that long? Ahaziah. As with our other two terrible dynasties, he only reigned for two years. So Moab is rebelling against Israel, right? And at the same time, Ahaziah has just fallen through his roof. I can't put this next part into better words than the Bible did, so I'm just going to read it out. Now Ahaziah had fallen through the lattice of his upper room in Samaria and had injured himself. So he sent messengers saying to them, go and consult Beelzebub, the god of Ekron, to see if I will recover from this injury. But the angel of the Lord said to Elijah the Tishbite, go up and meet the messengers of the king of Samaria and ask them, is it because there is no god in Israel that you are going off to consult Beelzebub, the god of Ekron? Therefore, this is what the Lord says, you will not leave the bed you are lying on, you will surely die. So that's what happens. Ahaziah dies and is succeeded by his brother. Our next king is Joram. Joram wasn't as bad a leader as Ahab and Ahaziah. He did get rid of the altar of Baal and the sacred stone of Baal, but he did still keep like the poles. And so he's, he gets a solid D, which is better than an F, but is still not passing. The Bible also says that he still clung to the sins of Jeroboam because I'm telling you, Jeroboam does not go away. He's like herpes. When it comes to idolatry, almost getting rid of everything is not enough, my friends. What can I say? We serve an all or nothing God. Joram got shot in the back running from this guy named Jehu, who you might have might remember me mentioning in like the last video. Yeah, he's back. This makes Jehu our next king. Jehu started his reign by killing off Ahab's entire family, including, as I mentioned earlier, having Jezebel thrown out of a window. He also then pretended to be like, like a huge uh, devotee to Baal and invited all the ministers to Baal saying like, hey, yo, all these other kings, yeah, they serve Baal, but I'm gonna like really serve Baal. So all the ministers to Baal went, hex yeah. So they all like come to this place where Jehu then has them murdered. We're talking full on red wedding aesthetics, okay? Like it was, it was wild. He then had the temple of Baal torn down and turned into a latrine. Jehu in plan. He was so close, but he didn't eradicate all the idol worship because he kept the golden calves in Bethel and Dan. Jehu, you were so close. He was succeeded by his son, Jehoiahaz. Jehoiahaz ruled for 16 years and then he, say it with me now, did evil in the sight of the Lord. Remember what I said about Jeroboam? This man does not go away because Jehoiahaz followed on in his long tradition. The same went for his successor, Jehoiash. Jehoiash was the son of Jehoahaz and ruled for 16 years. He didn't really do much, so we're not going to talk about him. He was, however, succeeded by his son, Jeroboam II, who is an apt successor to Jeroboam I in every single conceivable way. Yay. I'll say this for Jeroboam II. Dude reigned for 41 years. He restored the kingdom's borders to what they had been under Solomon. The kingdom flourished under him. Unfortunately, their spiritual health did not. Y'all remember that pattern of how when you are a terrible leader, your successors will not last a long time? He was succeeded by his son, Zechariah, who only reigned for six months. As with Elah, one of Zechariah's officers then conspired against him and had him killed. So side note, if you notice that there is a lot of like repeating issues in your life that tend to go back generations, yes, it might be a generational curse that needs to be broken off, but also maybe check and see if your behaviors are aligning with those of your ancestors who did meet the best fate. Anyway, our next king is Shalom. Shalom ruled in Samaria for a month before he too was assassinated by our next king. That king's name is Menahem. Menahem was also a jerk, but he reigned for 10 years. His most notable accomplishment is ripping open the bellies of pregnant women of the city of Tifsa for not opening their gates to him. Oh, that and indenturing the entire nation of Israel to the nation of Assyria in order to strengthen his hold as king. You know, <laughs> just kingly things. I'm sure that won't come back to bite us. Spoiler alert, it does. Menahem is then succeeded by his son. Our next king is Pekahiah. Pekahiah only reigned for two years because as we have previously established, when your predecessor stinks, you are screwed. Particularly if you yourself are also not inclined to follow the Lord. Pekahiah was assassinated by his chief officer, Pekah. Pekah! Pekah! King Pekah reigned for 20 years. 
This is gonna shock you, but he also did evil in the side of the Lord. <laughs> Who would've thunk? It was during the reign of King Pekka that the nation of Assyria invaded again and took off a huge bit of land, including the entire tribe of Issachar. Pekka was then assassinated by our final king, Hoshea. Guys, we are so close. Just hang in there. We're at the last king. Hoshea reigned for nine years. Like everyone else before him, he also did evil in the sight of the Lord, but of a different flavor than the others. Okay, so you know how Menahem indentured Israel to Assyria? Well, now they're a vassal state, right? Hoshea then tried to do a little bit of international double dipping and went to the king of Egypt looking for him to be his protectorate. He then stopped paying his tributes to Assyria, thus adding himself as a traitor. So Shalmaneser, the king of Assyria, was so mad that he just invaded the entire nation of Israel. It is at this point in history that Assyria invades Samaria and carries off all these Israelites back to the home country of Assyria, which is, you know, lays the groundwork for a whole different kettle of fish down the road. This makes Hoshea the last king of Israel, mostly because Israel is no longer a thing at this point. And Judah's just looking on like, are y'all good? No? Okay, we're just, we're just gonna be over here. Uh, y'all have fun with that whole exile thing. So what can we learn from this entire cycle of buffoonery? Firstly, like I said last time, guard your legacy. Oh my goodness gracious, guard it so jealously that others are looking at you funny, all right? Because your decisions can and will affect people up into the third generation. I don't care if it's your kids or your leadership at church or if, it, if you're at your job, just, ah, we're all leaders, okay? In our own special sphere, be careful. Secondly, you cannot halfway serve God. You cannot have a temple to whatever sitting in your backyard while professing Jesus in your front. It is not going to work. Not only are you poisoning your own life, you are also poisoning the lives and the reins of those who will come after you. Stop it. Thirdly, if you're gonna clean house, clean house. Like I said earlier, don't do it halfway because the peace that you leave behind will grow, okay? That peace that you leave behind can poison just as easily as the big pieces that you, you got rid of. Well, that got combative. This was a long one, y'all, but I thank you so much for sticking it out with me. Thank you so much for your support and your love. I am so grateful for all of you. Next week is the Kings of Judah. Pray for me, y'all. But it's gonna be, it's not gonna be as wild as the Kings of Israel, so we're good. In the meantime, stay safe, make wise choices, and happy Wednesday. Bye!